In the past several days, 2023 Parliament of the World's Religions held their annual conference at Marconi Place in Chicago. The theme this year is Defending Freedom and Human Rights. There are about 10,000 participants representing more than 200 different religions. This year is my first time to attend this gathering. Before I attend the Parliament of the World's Religions, I always assume the largest gathering of multiple religious people was AAR, American Academy of Religions, or SBL, Society of Biblical Literature. Apparently, I was wrong. I noticed there are so many differences among people, their religions, their skin color, culture, background, the way they worship, the food, they, the food they eat, and the clothes they wear. I feel I am but a member of a larger group of religious and spiritual people who are seeking the wisdom from the divine, working on the harmony among humans, the earth, and the universe. At the conscience plenary, the third day of a gathering, People from different religions share their thoughts and way to inspire people different from themselves. For example, there was a Taoism clergyman from Taiwan performing a ceremony of blessing to all who participate in this meeting. He wore a clergyman's suit and sang in Taiwanese chant. Summoning the divines, to come down from the sky, to see us the regular people, to know our struggles, to resolve our problems caused by human beings, and bless us with the prosperity from, uh, from the above. As a Christian like me who read the Hebrew Bible, it might bring some tension regarding the first commandment from the 10th commandment in the book of Exodus. You should have no other gods before me. Well, we wondered, that is not our God. Is that a blessing or a curse to us? At least for me, when I was a newly born again Christian in Taiwan, my church told me that my Buddhist parents, they were still worshiping the devil, and I should cut off all my connection with them with that. In the same conscious plenary, a Jewish lady from the ultra Orthodox community, Israel, spoke to us. She first expressed her appreciation for this opportunity to share her thoughts in public because every time she spoke in her community, people started to leave the room. She was also told that her applications for any position in her community would never be considered. The ultra-Orthodox community is one of the Abrahamic branches that follow the Torah closely and literally. The lady also pointed out that we people have made our religions and ancient wisdom the instruments of abuse especially to women, queer people, and those who cannot fit in the same box. Her story reminds me of a documentary drama on Netflix, Unorthodox. This miniseries is based on a book, Unorthodox, The Scandalous Rejections of My Hasidic Roots, by Deborah Feldman, 2012. The primary story is a young, man, young woman in a Hasidic community in New York City. It's a story of how she found her own voice and the way of life. She escaped from her marriage where she suffered, separated herself from her family and friends, and started over outside her Hasidic community because she was not allowed to go to the regular school before so she had no diploma, and it became tough for her to live outside the Hasidic community. 
or continue her study journey in music. She was once asked by other college student, "Is that true that women are treated like a pig to give babies for the family in your community?" It is hard to comprehend how much she must endured in her community before, and now more stigma and prejudice are put on her. The first, the first scripture today we read is from the book of Isaiah. The background of book of Isaiah is complex. The Northern Kingdom, Israel, was conquered by Babylonian Empire, and the Southern Kingdom, Judah, was under the threat from the Assyrian Empire. There are three kind of peoples mentioned in the scripture today. The first one is people of God. The second is the foreigner. The third is the eunuchs. After the fall of the northern kingdom, the Jewish people were captured and scattered all around the place. But life has to go on. Some of the exiled Jewish people marry other people who are not Jewish or not the people of God. However, those people are not welcome into the Jewish community in some way. Such in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, Jewish who married non-Jewish people are not counted as people of God, and they are not allowed to join or go back to uh, the, ex- the when the Israel Jewish community are allowed to go back to Jerusalem. They are not allowed to go back with them. And is in Israel, Israel chapter nine. Israel prayed to God, and said to the people of God, saying, "Now may confess to the Lord, the God of your ancestor, and do His will. Separate yourself from the peoples of the land and from the foreign wives." Non-Jewish people are asked to be sent away and separate from their family because the holy seed has mixed. In the end of Ezra, the elders of the congregation investigated and wrote down all those who married foreigners and the name of their descendants. Those names are kept in the Holy Bible for generations, and those people should be separated from the people of God. The third group of people here is eunuch. In different cultures. Eunuchs play different roles from time to time. In Isaiah's context, the eunuch might refer to officers who serve as at the Babylonian court or palace, who were castrated to fulfill their duty. These eunuchs include Jews and non-Jews people. We we knew some of their names, such as the Book of Daniel. King of Babylon ordered the palace master to bring some of Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect, and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endued with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in king's palace. Daniel is one of the four. From the tribe of Judah, and you also know the rest of Daniel's story. He can interpret the king's dream, and he survived from the fire and the lion. And Daniel is a eunuch. However, according to Torah, especially in the 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 Tiferes and Deuteronomy, eunuchs are disqualified from priestly service. They cannot be a priest. They cannot join the congregational life, and they are not allowed to enter the temple to worship God with other people. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak to Aaron and say, 'No one of your offspring throughout their generations who has a blemish may approach to offer the food of his God. Those who are born of illicit Union should not come into the assembling of the Lord, 
even to the tenth generation, none of their descendants shall come into the assembling of the Lord. They are from the Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Units are not complete, therefore they are treated differently accordingly. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. For some reasons, Jesus and his disciples retreat from the border of Galilee, where he healed whoever brought to him, to Tyre and Sidon, the land of Gentiles. In the beginning of Matthew chapter 15, Jesus has just told a parable and condemned the Pharisees and the scribes who are from Jerusalem for their evil intentions from the heart that defile. The unknown Canaanite woman, who is also a mother, come to Jesus ask him to help her daughter. However, the Lord, son of David, Jesus showed no mercy, but keep silent and ignore her when the Canaanite woman first called him. Jesus' male disciple, according, according to the Greek text, yes, they are all male. The male disciples asked their teacher to send that woman away and silence her. Jesus said to that mother, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The mother did not give up, but continued to beg and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. But Jesus replied, saying, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Hmm. Our church made sandwich for the night ministry on the third Wednesday every month. This Thursday, I took out the bread, cheese, and the turkey from the refrigerator. I also took out the zip bag from the drawer. I cleaned the table with water and wipes, and I started to assemble the sandwich, two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, and one slice of turkey breast. And some of us have known, Adam and I, we have two cute chihuahuas at home. Their name is Coco and Roxy. And I'm sure they were fed well that morning. I noticed one thing when I started to assemble those sandwiches. Coco, in brown color, jumped up to the tiny house. And Roxy, in silver color, sat right next to my feet. They were staring at me watch all my movement on the table. And I also noticed their tail were waggling. When I look at them, and their eye keeps sending me message directly to me, they are very cute. Kuneios, the Greek, means dogs. In some translations, it means little dogs. However, little dogs cannot justify that Jesus, a privileged rabbi, a Jewish man, the Holy Seed, does not treat this unnamed Canaanite mother, a non-Yahweh Adonai Adonai worshiper, as a human being like him, or not help her sick daughter. The Woman Bible Commentary Chapter Author Amy Jude Libanade comment on this story, saying that calling someone dogs or little dogs or even puppies makes no difference in humiliating a person, especially if that person is disadvantaged and in great need of help. It is a standard insult. Although I was told by some Christians that whenever I encounter a tough decision to be made, just think about WWJD. What would Jesus do in your situation? I wonder how could I benefit from using WWJD in this story? It's very tough for me. Last month, 
I attend another larger gathering, the United Church of Christ General Synod in Indiana Plus. Our newly elected General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ, Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson, gave us a speech and a series of challenges. I remember three of her key points. They are, what does a baptism mean in our context? What does membership mean in our context? And what does the church mean in our context? Traditionally, baptism is the first thing for born again Christians. After someone is born, after someone is baptized, he, she, or them could be called Christian or born again Christians. They can become a member of the local congregations, also allowed to serve in the church and part of a larger capital C church. However, baptism has become quite problematic these days. For LGBT people, more than 90% of the church in the United States won't baptize them unless they have changed themselves. Baptize also been weaponized against certain people and require people to be as same as us, the chosen and perfect ones. For some denominations, women are not allowed to preach and have no opportunity to be ordained. Like other clergy, like me, their voices and congregational life are silent and limited. And do people still want to come to the church, a place of worshiping God together? Also at the General Synod, a conference minister reported us a new book, Hear Us Out, Six Questions on Belonging and Belief to the Whole Delegation. The book interviewed more than 200 people in Pennsylvania, aged from 18 to 40. They are called the Millennials, or the Generation Z, or Gen Z. Some of us belong to this category. And they are asked several, several questions. One of the questions is, your current faith tradition, 56% of them answered, yes, we have a faith tradition. 18% answered, no. 16% answered, not anymore. And 2% answered, never. And 16, 17% answered, I'm thinking about it. When they are asked, what is your activity level? 10% of them answered, very active. 8% answered, loosely active. 12% answered, attend somewhat. 19% answered, spiritual, they have their own religion. And 10% answered, they are agnostic. And 18%, 18% answered, they are atheist. What went wrong with the Christian church if we ask them? Nine of ten says the church is too, too judgmental and hypocritical. Seventy percent say the church is insensitive to others. Thirty percent say the Christian church is categorized by moral failure in, in the leadership. And 91 percent of them say Christian church is anti-homosexual. According to the American Psychological Association, APA, resilience is ability to bounce back and grow personally after a major life event, conflict, trauma, or serious health problem. And most of the people interviewed express they have moved forward and found contentment and the fulfillment in their new direction and their new situation. There are two key points from the interview. Whoever can work with them through their adversity, they feel they belong to those people. Any place can provide space where people can authentic and honest about their challenges and the missed opportunities. 
is the place they failed they belong to. The General Minister of President and President of, of UCC remind us what does church mean? What does the gathering of people mean in our context? Do we prepare well enough for it? And I'm wondering why the author of Matthew wanted to keep this Canaanite woman's, Canaanite mother's stories in the book. Maybe the author would like to reflect on the conflict, the, conf the context of early church. Yes, most of us are still very Jewish. Our heart is still like stone. Keeping this story is to admit that we are not perfect at all. The story should be told for generations about how bad we were, and hopefully people after us can learn from our failure. The Canaanite mother answered Jesus, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. I saw the resilience of faith in her. She does not belong to Jesus' community, but she went there not for herself, but for her daughter. What would her community people judge her, or what Jesus and his male disciple would consider her? Those are not important anymore. She has found her way. Jesus replied to her, both request, saying, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Her daughter has been healed from that moment. Even Jesus was amazed by this Canaanite mother's face. What did not, who did not compromise anything or lose her authentic identity? I guess similar situations were in the book of Isaiah. The prophet saw those outsiders, the foreigners, the eunuchs, they hold strong faith and maintain justice, do what is right, who were much better than most of the Israelites did at that time. Our God, Adonai Adonai, command through the prophet saying, I will give in my house and within my wall a monument and a name better than sons and daughter. I will give them an everlasting name that should not be cut off. This I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. For my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. I want to close in what I have learned from others to worship this week. An American Indian gentleman shared with us that people, we humans, do not have power. Only the divine, only the thunder, the flood, the big water, the wind, the typhoon, the hurricanes, they do have the power. We human can be the instrument of those power. Our responsibility is to show our influence on others, our love, our respect, our protections, and good stewardship of Mother Earth. Another female rabbi shared with us a Jewish meditation by putting one of our hands on our hearts and put the other hand on the others and saying, I support your heart, no fear. I support your heart, no fear. May our church can be the place and the people who say to everyone, anyone, wherever they are on their journey, they enter our place, we encounter them on the streets, we will say that we support your heart, no fear. We support your heart, no fear. Amen.